Hey friends, we're in Acts chapter 8 today as we continue to move through the New Testament together. What an incredible book this has been so far. We have seen so much in the previous chapters about not only the history of how the church began, but how God used these different circumstances to change the way religion and church would be run. It, it's so different, so radical compared to what the Jewish system had been for hundreds and hundreds of years. And so here we see in Acts, just a review, that God used the Holy Spirit, his own gift, to be the instrument of power in the church. And and then preaching from Peter would be used to share the gospel message. That's how people would come to know God and Jesus, and then give their lives to him. And then, excuse me, baptism, the whole idea that people would make a decision and take an action to match that decision and give their lives to Jesus. It was no longer a mark of faith that was cultural, nor was it uh, national, like the Jewish mark of circumcision. No, this, this would be a spiritual mark that all people, men, women, children, can have as part of their faith. And then and then we see the development of the church in a way that was very unique. They empowered the body, the people, the members to do the work of the church instead of just having the few select do it. That helped explode the church even further. And then finally, <clears throat> that was in Acts 6 and then in Acts 7 we see the character of the church demonstrated through Stephen that no matter what you do to the church they will respond with forgiveness because the message we carry is not self-preservation, but forgiveness for all people. And Stephen demonstrated that, and it, again, helped the church to grow. Well, then that story concludes in right into Acts 8, where we see a guy by the name of Saul show up. We're going to talk more about him in the chapters ahead. But he starts to go around and arrest, arrest Christians, persecute them. He, he authorized the death of Stephen. Things are not good for the church. It appears that they're going to be destroyed instantly. But that's not what happens. Instead of destroying the church, it scatters the church. All of these believers who had been learning about Jesus and given their lives to him now leave town to take their message beyond Jerusalem to Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. And the story we're going to look at in Acts chapter 8 today is a guy by the name of Philip. Philip was one of those selected to be a table servant in Acts 6. He was one of those guys that was so amazing and empowered and high quality, high character, that they thought he could take on this ministry. He leaves town and instantly goes to Samaria, to this area of Jewish history that had been rejects of Judaism. They, people treated them as half-breeds and, and rejects and didn't want them to be included. And yet Philip shows up and starts sharing with them the story of Jesus, and they start giving their lives to Christ just as many of the Jews had. It's fascinating. Philip demonstrates inclusion like Jesus did and they, in turn, surrender their lives. And then Philip leaves that town. You can read that story. But to get to the verse that I had today, Acts chapter 8, verse 35, Philip leaves that town, sees this guy in a chariot who's from Ethiopia, part of Egypt, high up in the leadership chain. And he's studying this book called Isaiah and reading from it, trying to understand it. In Acts 8, 35, Philip sees it and begins from that very scripture and then teaches him the story of Jesus. I love that. Philip did what we are all told to do together. The church is supposed to go out into the world and start where people are at and then walk them forward to see the story of Jesus around them. We start where they're at and bring Jesus to them. It's, it's fascinating to me how quickly the church figured this out. And Philip is the demonstration of that. <clears throat> Jesus does the same in our life. He always starts where we're at, and he takes us from there to make help us become who he wants us to be. And that's how we function 
as followers of Jesus. We start wherever we're at and move from there. So whatever your past, whatever your history, whatever's gone on in your life, whatever you've done to fail or how the sin you've committed, Jesus forgives that on the cross. He starts where you're at and he takes you from there. That is the story of the church. <laughs> It's just amazing to me how one guy like Philip can become this instrument that we all learn from, and yet that's exactly what Jesus wants all of us to do, to be like Philip. <clears throat> so start where you're at today. Who do you see around your life who needs Jesus? See where they're at, figure out a way to build a relationship with them, and then as you go with them, see what you can do to bring the story of Jesus into their life. When you do, you won't be, don't be surprised if they say, hey, I want to be baptized and give my life to Jesus too. That's the power of the Holy Spirit at work. God bless you as you do. We'll see you again next time as we get into the story of Saul.